Hi everybody, this is BB and you're at BB Love Sports. Welcome to the channel where sports and gaming is the exquisite fusion. Thank you so much for locking in everybody. If you hear some outside noises, we are on the lake. So it's a beautiful day with a little bit of overcast. So you'll hear horns blowing. You might hear some outside talking because I have all of the doors open. Okay, in the Florida room. And what's a Florida room? Like a summer room, that type of thing. So people are very, very active. So if you hear any outside noise, my apologies. But it's such a beautiful day. And more people are bringing their boats out on the water, which is so cool and everything like that. I have some lost footage before we begin this coverage. And it's me, myself, being out on the water and showing the lakes and stuff like that. So if you're in the Queen City, we have like two beautiful popular lakes. One is Lake Wiley and the other is Lake Norman. So you can just really have a ball on both. But welcome to the channel. I hope everyone has settled in. This is series two of a three-part series for the Queen's Cup that happened this past Saturday. And we're also about to gear up for the Kentucky Derby that goes down on Saturday. So it's like Derby week all week. It's so good to have the races back and in progress because of last year's pandemic. Just couldn't responsibly have those races. So with things moving on the up swing I should say in the spring I like to give my little puns um, you can really start to explore how you're going to keep people safe and get back to some normalcy on your events and one thing I can say is that the Queen's Cup set the bar with how they do things. They really set the bar with virtual experience. And so they've already listed their dates for 2022. So we are very excited about that. So we're gonna talk more in depth on this series about the Queen's Cup, about the racing and all of that. I have a nice spread, so I will be having a more relaxed type of media coverage on this spread. It's going to be um, very relaxed, very informative, so get your essentials. So right now, I have playing on the big screen, Auntie Main, which is a fave. It's a favorite film, and there's a lot of wacky, crazy, exciting horse riding with the Fox and the Hounds on this classic film that is showing on TCM. They show it a lot on Turner Classic Movies, but I have it in my vault because I just love it so much. And so um, let's get started with the good vibes. And what we're going to do here is have the lucky milliner orchestra there's good blues tonight well it is a beautiful day talk about the queen's cup my commentary and more so to start those good vibes let's start with some good music ready
get into this Darby vibe as well as the remnants of the Queen's Cup. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we are in the mood. We're in the mode. We're in the mood. So let's start talking about the Queen's Cup. And then we'll keep going from there. Oh, that is so cool. Now, that was played in the home earlier before I was born because my grandparents and my great grandparents, I was blessed enough to know all of them um they had the thick records and the record player and so now that they have transitioned uh we have the records and so we are in search or i am in search of this beautiful nice record player very vintage that's what i'm on search for to play those records because it's just gonna be so like divine like super divine and, and 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 brings like so much good nostalgia and so um you know you like to pay your respects to your lineage and stuff like that so they had all those great uh records and like Rosetta Thorpe and like oh my goodness all these great orchestras records and so that's why I love listening to Sirius XM with the 40s Junction Radio and as I was saying to people uh, this watch right here uh, is my grandmother's on my maternal side my grandfather who served in World War II we're a military family uh, when they first got married he gave her this watch this is the original band and everything um, and when I was a little girl, I would play in her jury box, so I would I put this on. So when Nana transitioned, Grand Demure, the Creole ladies, we're Creole ladies, we continue the traditions, um, my mother let me uh, have this. So it has the original, I mean everything, with the uh, little chain, look how small the face is, and I mean, just really beautiful. So I'm always uh, having something of hers, the heirlooms, to uh, keep me closer. So my grandfather brought her this watch. And when I was little, I used to play in her um, jewelry box where she would eye, eye me real good. She would eye me real good to make sure that I kept it delicate and wouldn't break anything. And my mother has their um, wedding rings. And, you know, it's just all good. And then right here, if you can see it, uh, this is a hound's tooth. This is my grandmother's as well. It is beautiful. It has like the hound tooth earring. So um, I always just try to keep a good vibe with that. Okay, so we're 10 minutes in. Let's put on some beautiful classic music and let's get into the talk. I think you all have your essentials and I have mine. So we're going to get into this wonderful vibration. Okay. Now the 2021 Queen's Cup handicap in the races and of course um, they do support the Alzheimer's um, 
charities and stuff like that and I think that's great that's one of the charities we support too and if you look on Beaver Love Sports 1021 Magazine where I'm publisher and founder the media group they put some of the charities that um, we support besides the Alzheimer's as well uh, but the first race was Novant Health and this was in memory of Thomas M. Moskis Sr. sponsored by Novant Health mating claiming hurdle and the winner for that race was Ghost of Sphere. Uh, also, with Ghost of Sphere, let's tell you a little bit more in depth this time around. This is would be the horse from the River D stable. Dark blue, light blue hoops, light blue hoops on sleeves and cap. Okay, that would be like the silks. And the jockey would be Graham Waters and so it is a two mile hurdle the first place purse would have been 15,000 uh, for maidens four years old and upwards and four year olds would be like 146 pounds older would be like 154 and all of the horses were Western Crusader Lap of the Gods Embrace the grind. It must be my lucky day. Lemon again and oceanographer. Okay, that was the first race. All right, going into the second race was Brown Advisory, thoughtful investing, sponsored by Brown Advisory, Maiden Hurdle, and the purse for this was twenty thousand for maidens four years old and upwards. The first was fifteen thousand, and. The horses was caused for part of Market Bubble Sea Mass Coco Star. Um, Heya Bussa One, Compass Zone, Channel Island, Topsfield, and Kill Ronan. Kill Ronan would take the win on this, and the jockey was Archibald Kingsley Jr., J. David Richardson, Bob Agnello, Richard Knopp. Burgundy beige sash, beige hoops on sleeves, burgundy and beige cap. So this was a two mile and one eighth hurdle. And then we're gonna go in to giving love to uh, Archibald Kingsley Jr. as a jockey on that one. And there were some more notes, as I said before, for the first race, it was close to 300 views. Then in the second race for the virtual, it would, was like 300 plus views. There was a slip in the second race, but to also give kudos, Archibald Kingsley Jr. was not only the jockey, but he was also the trainer. In second place for the second race, it would be Compass Zone and then Market Bubble for third place. In the first race, it would be Ghost of Sphere first place, Lab of the Gods would be third place and Embrace the Grind second place. And the commentators was Meg and Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson is such a legend. And uh, the races pretty much went from 12.30 to uh, 4.30 and it just was flowing very effortlessly the third race was Sonatrol verified electronic security the stakes for this when the purse was 35,000 for four year olds and upward which have not won over hurdles prior to March the 1st or which have never won three races other than three-year-olds. The lineup for the horses would be Family Tree, Sportswear, Bodes Well, Brian Bakes Cookies, Anticipating the Happy Giant, Arch My Boy. For this race, the first would have been Brian Bakes Cookies, the second would be Family Tree, and the third winner for this race would be um,
Seems like it would have been City Dreamer for the third race. For the visuals on this race, it was 300 plus viewers. On this particular race, um, this was a race that was in memory of the race benefactors. And we stated that on the first series, Midge and Jim Price, the Queen's Cup NPC Chase. And uh, we do have just a love for just seeing how everything was set up. It started off overcast with the weather. Then the weather went from overcast to rainy, which makes the grounds somewhat difficult than say if it was on a drier day. So when you take the slips and the falls into play, you just have to give kudos to everyone because of the situation and even to those changing up the different hurdles and everyone collectively just making the visual viewing experience great. And this is something that just wasn't done before. So you definitely want to give the kudos. So that's exactly what we did. It was great seeing the horses in the paddock um, and all of the exchange coming from the commentators, the communications, talks on breeding and how well the horses do or they don't do over the hurdles. So these were some just beautiful highlights as each race interchanged from one to the next. Now, we're going to talk about the fourth race, and we'll get that going here. And you may hear a lawnmower, some people are starting up their lawnmowers and stuff like that. It's just a, a busy time within the neighborhood of the lake, and we are live stream. Okay, the fourth race was Easy Fix sponsored by them and uh, the ratings were handicap hurdle overnight handicap the purse was 20,000 for four year olds and upward which are rated 115 or lower the highest rated horse would be assigned 158 pounds with all other weights adjusted accordingly based on the current ratings the minimum weight 140 pounds not including apprentice allowances so in this particular race, the fourth race, the horses was Prayer Hope, Emerald Rocket, Go As You Please, Down Royal, Mr. Bridger, Big Bend, Ambulance. These are some really nice names for the horses, don't you think? Like, really cool names for the horses. So, first place was Down Royal, second, Prayer Hope, third, Screen Image. The jockey was Bernard Dalton, let's talk a little bit about Down Royal here. The jockey again was Bernard Dalton. Kate Dalton for Don Royal, Royal Blue, Gold Cross Sash with Flora Delise Gold Cap. And the floor is to a flower. Now, this particular horse, uh, Miss Crown by High Yield. New York. Prayer for Hope. Dash Staple. Lime Royal Blue Triangle at thirds. Lime Sleeves. Royal Blue. Chevron's Lime Cap. The trainer Jack Fisher. Jockey Graham Waters. 
Grand Prayer by the Grand Slam of Kentucky. Then you had screen image. And right now, I'm just going to look at all of the uh, races and see if I can find something there. But uh, at this point, we will move on. And then the fifth phrase was Brown Advisory, Thoughtful Investing. Allowance timber. Purse was 15000 for five-year-olds and upwards, which have never won two races over timber. You had Typolo, Hayana, Motivational, Storm Team, Highway Prince. These are the horses. In first place was Motivational. The jockey, Barry Foley. Tantiri Racing LLC, Ted Thompson, Aquamarine, Red, Red Chevrons on Sleeves, Red Cap. Then in second place was Storm Team for this race, the fifth race. Graham Waters was the jockey, Sheila J. Williams and North was stable, White, Cherry Red Hoop, Cherry Red Sleeves, White Cap. Then, in third, you had Hayana. The jockey was Eddie Keating. EHB Racing, Casey Pinker 7, pink with black and white stripes, black cap. Then from there, with these, races these were again a tumble happened but you have to think about the grounds and all of that even with the rain let up you still have like wet grounds and so it was just very precocious type weather especially for the jockeys and for the horses the sixth race, the last race for the Queen's Cup would be True Green. Live life outside. The True Green Future Champions Turf Race. Allowance for three-year-olds and upward. 145 pounds, 155 pound maiden, allowed five pounds, apprentice riders, allowed five, five pounds. The horses were Show Court, Hypnotist, Maccabee, 301, Hurtgen Forest, Do the Floss. I thought that was like so cool. Such a cool name. Make Steamy. Okay, Grey Anatomy fans. Make Dreamy. <laughs> and then Contemplating. These are the horses. The first horse. And he came in third, which was show court. Jockey, Bernard Dalton. Trainer, Arch Kingsley Jr. Owner, Mark Bayek Jr. Garnet and Black Diamonds. Garnet Sleeves Black Cap. Second place was Hurtgen Forrest. The jockey was Elizabeth Skelly. Chicas. Arch Kingsley Jr. Trainer, Carrington Holdings LLC, Navy Blue and Hot Pink Diagonal Stripes, Hot Pink Sleeves, Hot Pink Cap. Then the first place winner was To the Floss. These are some really cool names. Like that's a moment to always get a story behind, like, how did the name come about and all of that. So now I'm going to take this off. 
that's the hound's tooth it's beautiful and that was my nana's so I don't want to lose anything so these were the races and with Herkin Forest and Show Court 10 to the floss. You know, these were just some really great um, races right here. With Do the Floss being in first, the jockey was Gerard Galligan. Huracana Farm, Purple and Gold Stripes Gold Cap. So, the trainer also for the winning horse, Do the Floss, was Arch Kingsley Jr. So I thought that was just really, really beautiful. Now, going into the future, there were announcements here. And on Saturday, mark the date for 2022, it will be April the 30th. The Queen's Cup will celebrate their 25th anniversary. Race and course sponsorships, personal space, licenses, and corporate hospitality tents are on sale starting Monday, April 26, 2021. And you can call 704-843-7070 or you can email info at queenscup.org. So I thought that was just so interesting looking at the program and talking about the races. Now, for race six, um, Herc and Forrest is owned by Bill and Carrington Price. Uh, and they put on the Queen's Cup. And again, I had the opportunity to interview Bill Price a few years ago on my talk radio show that will be coming back very soon once we do the revamps. And we will have his interview as well as other celebrities that I've covered over the past 19 years available for your listening pleasure. But hot. Hurtkin Forest is owned by Bill and Carrington Price, and this is a three-year-old 2010 Melbourne Cup winner. American steps up to one and one-fourth miles for the first time after being well beaten in a couple of hot turfs. Maidens at Saratoga and Belmont last year. And the optimistic flow, he will improve with extra distance. Uh, McSteamy. Number seven, just give, giving you outlines of uh, the horses. One of the four entries in the race for trainer Lilla Welcher looks like a young horse who still has a future ahead of him on the flat. The four-year-old of Artie Schiller registered his first career win on the fifth start last time out when taking a one mile at All Weather Maiden special weight at Presque Isle Downs in October. For this barn. His damn Pleasant McGee also won for the same connections and recorded seven flat wins in all during her career. This may be a stepping stone for bigger and better things on the flat for the top pick. Now, um, they talk about in Handicap Race 6 next Saturday, which is this coming Saturday, Churchill Downs, the 147th. Kentucky Derby run will be over one and one four miles on dirt and the true green future champion turf race is the Queen's Cup on Derby run on the flat over one fourth one and one fourth miles of turf horses in this race for the Queen's Cup tend to use it as a prep run for assignments over jumps later in the spring and the summer. But that is not to say that it will not be competitive. And they have very tight finishes in the races for the Queen's Cup. So that was a nice overview of um, race six. Okay, then let's go back to um, race three and talk about that in depth. Um, the feature race of the day is the 24th and a half the running of the Queen's Cup NPC Chase with a purse of 35000 this year. 
This is a race designed as a feeder into the major league for some of the very best young horses from last season. It has attracted a quality lineup of the leading novices in the country. In the U.S. as a novice is a horse in his or her first two years of jump racing. And we'll be talking about terms in the third series, so you don't want to miss that at all. Now, two British bred horses stand out on their form since coming into the United States. And this could be the some cracking races and defeats since shipping to the U.S. Uh, the other British import is number seven, Arch, my boy, who has won three times in England, once on the flat and two hurdles before shipping to the U.S. And he ran excellent races in both his starts here last year, finishing runner-up on both occasions. Behind Red Dyson at Saratoga and the aforementioned snap decision at Belmont. On paper, his two-length loss to snap decision, also off-level weights, reads as the best piece of form, but finishing tends to be closer around oval tracks rather than undulating country courses. So the program, which you can also download online, you just go to uh, the Queen's Cup official site, and you can take a look at the racing program, and it gives the conditions of the race, um, it gives the weight, it gives the purse, it gives the distance and the jumps, it gives the silks, it gives the number of competitors, and information about the horse and weight to be carried. So very thorough in the programs and all that. So now when we talk about her, the purse, this is one definition that we'll talk about, but we'll do a lot of them over for our final uh, series. The purse is the total value of the race winners. Normally, it is the divided among top placers at race meets like Queen's Cup. Purse money comes from sponsors. So that's very interesting. And then silks, because I did mention that. Jockeys wear uniquely patterned nylon shirts called silks or colors in memory of the days when they were made of that material. Six silks are like one of a kind and registered to that owner alone with the jockey club. They make it easy to identify a particular jockey and a horse. And if you take a look back at the previews of the Queen's Cup, side by side in one of the races, the silks were very close. So, when you're doing commentary, that's good commentary uh, because you are visual and what you're seeing, you're commenting on. And that's how you become like a great caller of games and a great caller of races and all of that stuff. Now, we're getting a little louder with the lawn care because now they're at this particular home. <laughs> so with the maintenance crew coming we are alive and again we're bringing a beautiful sunlight people are on the water and so our maintenance care is here so they pretty much do for like every row of homes and so um, what is really good about our lawn care um, professionals is that it is Mother's Day week and also so um, they do free like a gift to um, the ladies so it's a wonderful thing to always just have that type of professionalism as well as um, compassion and kind heartness so for Mother's Day all of the ladies along the lake their yards and maintenances will be as a gift 
And speaking of gifts, I think that it is beautiful how everything was done. I, I don't think that we give enough or those who do you get enough love putting events together the behind the scenes the calls the confirmations um things that will go wrong can go wrong if you, if you want to say that things that will go wrong they can go wrong um the highs the in-betweens the long hours the double checking the triple checking even more than triple checking to make sure things are straight the last minutes um, the unforeseen and the quick thinkings of what you do when things may go awry. Um, so I just, you know, when you're familiar with the back end of events, when you work with media, because you are in media, um, when you're well seasoned, it's great. You usually can kind of like fit it. But we all have been there in the beginnings. So I always, with my staff, and when it comes to events or getting media credentials and stuff like that, um, the learning curve is a must do. You pay your dues. You're just gonna have to. And then when you become seasoned in it, um, you can flow effortlessly. If you are trying to get media credentials and someone wants to give you a run around or something like that, I'm usually, um, I don't sugarcoat anything. So either you're going to get the credentials or you're not going to get the credentials and I move along. Um, I have proven myself as well as others. So if you're being treated like a novice, then you just be like you're lost. And that's just what you do. But overall, um, you have to accept no's and you can accept yes and you carry on. In the 19 years for um, 1021 Magazine, 1021 Media Group, I've covered the president, I've covered your who's who. I've done the Oscars, the Grammys, all of that. So if I get any no's other than those, those plateaus, it just jumps off my back and we just keep it moving. But one thing that 1020 Media Group has done, we are all about integrity. And with a Lifestyles magazine, that's just what it is. It's Lifestyles. We cover sports. We cover um, different other events. Um, and we cover political business entertainment it's called lifestyle fashion beauty and where we don't just cover one thing and so when people get that which many people do because we are in the digital age of information uh, then they understand that they cover wide variety of things and this is what they do take a look at the coverage even with our website going through design, and I'm a very big stickler about that, um, we tell people, go to our social media platforms. And this is just a learning curve for a lot of people while we talk about things before we end this segment. Uh, we also talk about numbers. Numbers, they matter and they don't matter. We'll talk about a little bit of that on the last series because um, you can have, you can buy numbers. It's your, who you're associated with, which should matter, and your access, and what you have accomplished over numbers that you can buy in social media. Um, and if you want to talk about who your demographics is, that's different from numbers. Um, so, what I love is that the back end of things, given the kudos, and I definitely, I definitely give the kudos to the Queen's Cup because they did an excellent job with the virtual. They pretty much set the bar for something that really has not been done before. Anyone who's doing virtual for their sports, you're in a territory where you have made history. You've really made history. And as the first person, not just the first woman, not just the first woman of color, as a woman of color of African-American descent, Cuban, Native American, Creole, I am the first woman, yes, 
but I'm the first person in the entire world to create a full featured lifestyle magazine. 20 years means 2022. So kudos to the Queen's Cup. It got up to over 400 views when we looked at the different races, and I say round of applause to that. We'll be coming back with Series 3 with less noise, but we have to get the yards looking great. Okay? But thank you so much for locking in. And more to come. We'll have a lot more great classical music that will be happening. So make sure you stay tuned. Thanks for locking in. This is the live stream. And more to come. Off to the races. Because there are more races to come. And we will be covering many. And especially the one that's coming up this weekend. Kentucky Derby.